appreciate all, all of Ivan's work on the strategy. I think we, we, we excited a lot about it. Uh, and uh, this one, I think, is also a strategy on a directional strategy that he's created. So let's take a look at the video. Ladies and gentlemen, hi. My name is Ivan. I would like to present you my strategy that trades altcoin on Binance Perpetual Exchange. In order to do that, I implemented five indicators that combined tries to find a signal to enter, enter the position and use the following three barriers, stop loss and trying to take profit at 3% both and four hours time limit. So here is my implementation of these five uh, indicators. Uh, they only manipulate the processed data and do not use any custom execution logic. The indicators you can find here. In order to find parameters, I used one slab package and tried to optimize using market data from uh, Q1 and got the results of 26% return and 2.04 uh, 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 sharp ratio, which is really impressive. Uh, to be honest, test results uh, in April give near zero performance, which indicates some level of overfitting. But nevertheless, I tried to use these parameters live and results were rather good. The bot used $100 to earn more than 10% return in just two days, which is really impressive. But uh, when I looked closely, I realized that it uses different parameters from the one I found through optimization. And these parameters are standard uh, and probably I forgot to change them from the moment I made the controller is through the command line interface. But quite curiously, the results from these default parameters were quite bad in Q1. They lost 13% and neutral to bad in April. But right from the moment I turned the strategy on, it became quite profitable. Uh, I found that following things uh, the volatility spiked a bit, but not much. I think in order to understand how the strategy reacts to this volatility, I think these levels of volatility we can find somewhere in February. And we can take a closer look there. At the same time, one additional thing I found that number of trades changed. So these default parameters, they named config2, they were doing around four four trades a day till the day before yesterday and then it <laughs> changed the live trading made certain trades a day but at the same time the deviation from the test was just half percent or maybe even less uh, curiously at the same time the optimized strategy should have returned 8.6 percent so not quite big of a difference but uh, it also should have been profitable but default uh, default strategy trades more two times more and we can we can see it here this was the start of the default strategy quite a lot of trades and then here i realized my mistake and uh, here i started the optimized strategy and it traded only three times and the result is the result is uh, negative 93 cents for one day and uh, three hours. So this is it. As a conclusion, don't get too excited with backtesting results. And uh, it is much better to build a robust pipelines, repeatable and uh, ideally uh, mostly automated. So because if uh, I made my mistake of using different parameters because there was no automation and when the humans are involved, always the place for so-called fat finger. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you find it uh, enjoyable and uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Cheers. Awesome. I really appreciate your yeah, humility yeah, in explaining your strategy. Uh, and your experience in backtesting actually is a very familiar one uh, because I think I've also had the experience of getting really excited about a backtest and then realizing that it was just like you know, overfitting uh, or 
uh, it was due to some kind of error in my code that was actually not related to backtest. In general, also my experience is because we actually started as a quant hedge fund in 2017. And we were implementing a directional strategy like this based on backtesting. Uh, and one thing I can say is that even though our results are actually pretty good, uh, number one, um, our sharp ratio was actually never that high because it was like 0.5 because uh, any type of directional strategy is going to have some volatility. And I think even then, it was after six months of doing hardcore machine learning and hand drawing patterns on a chart that Martin, our CTO at the time, used. So I think that there, it's really hard to distill that signal for the noise uh, right now. And in some ways, actually, that's why I'm actually more excited about these step arb strategies because it's kind of right now, your strategy here is running Worldcoin uh, versus USCT, but the information in the market, uh, all this price is inherently due to the Bitcoin to USCT price. So it's kind of, like if you're doing set R between Bitcoin and Worldcoin, you're kind of capturing that Delta between Worldcoin and the market, quote unquote, as opposed to if you just do directional based on Worldcoin to USCT, it's hard to separate the, the Worldcoin specific information from the uh, overall crypto market information from my point of view i really like also this strategy because i think that what you learn is like that you have a pre pre part of the process a previous part before deploying a bot that is trying to understand your strategy understand your indicators and send back testing one thing that was sad was that you couldn't deploy the same one but in the next week or this week you will be able to deploy the same with the same indicators. What I would like to add is uh, comparing very well the back testing with the live testing is something important. And if you want later on, I can help you because it's like after you run a bot, you should stop archive it. And then with that data, you should back test on top of it to understand if it's working well or if you are taking the same traits or not. And how big is the delta? From my point of view, as I always mentioned in the live sessions, I don't recommend to take back testing as live testing because the conditions are always different. Doing in one second resolution will be also always kind of better. Oh, nice. You did the... Oh, nice. Very good. Well, actually, this is the interesting thing. If you see the forms, they are kind of similar. The forms of the back testing and the live testing. Seems like the back test didn't took the first trade that you did so they don't start at the same point but should be probably moved a little bit uh, earlier the start time of the back tester so it can take the first part maybe the indicator that you are using a indicator that you are using is not loaded by the time that the live test starts so it takes the first trade so maybe you can move it a little bit earlier and then the other thing that i would recommend you is that if we can do it with one second, uh, probably the lines are going to be even more comparable. But the overall point is that what is more valuable for me, rather than, than the back testing, what you are saying is once you understood how you were using the indicators, you went to the live chart, you saw what you were doing. And I, and I heard in the video that you said, now I understood what I was doing wrong. And then I change it and then I have much more less trades. That's probably the iterative process that tell, will make you succeed and control what you want to do with your strategy and re deploy things that make sense or not. So that's a very good uh, submission, uh, Manja. Well, the next thing that you will need to do once you master this strategy in Worldcoin and you compare the live test with the back test, you get up to the point that they are really similar and you trust much more the results of the back test. You understand those limits based on what you like, what you say in the video. I understood what I was doing wrong. That gives you an intuition about what are the limits for the indicators that make sense or not. For example, if you use an EMA of nine and an EMA of 10 to do the crosses, probably with some random backtesting, you will get good results, but it's like randomness that. So once you define that, you will probably get up to the point when you can run a bunch of backtestings, filter those backtestings by certain rules, and start auto-deploying the bots. With the auto-deploy, 
is where you get in, in I like a lot the direction trading, but the bad thing is that if you don't have an auto deploy, you always start picking what's the best thing to deploy. So once you have the auto deploy, I think that you will be able to, to have an operations of a direction trading strategies. And then another important thing is try always to deploy at the same time, a uh, opposite strategy. If you have a directional trading strategy that probably tries to go with a trend as you are doing. I told you in this call recently that uh, the message that I will send you, I'll confuse your strategy with uh, Nico's strategy, but also applies to you because it's trend. But the thing that was wrong was talking about the follower and the leader. But in a trend strategy like this, it probably had very good results in the past few days because the market was really trendy. So if the market trends a lot, if your strategy is a trend follower, will make a lot of money. And a mean reversion strategy probably will lose money. So identifying regimes is good to probably change the allocation to how much you are allocating to trend following and how much you are allocating to mean reversion. But also deploying the two of them will work as a kind of hedge between the two of them. Probably you're not going to have good days or very bad days. You're going to be always averaging between the performance of the two strategies. But well, overall, really good. And I like a lot the manual intervention that you did to understand your strategy compared to backtesting. So uh, congratulations.